The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF. Hey, Kara Oosterhuis here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Pulse School episode, and I have here with me Robin Bonesse Davidson, who is a Pulse Research Scientist with Lakeland College. How's it going today? Pretty good, pretty good. That's awesome. So we're at the time of the year, we're starting to look in our fields and we're thinking about, you know, we're, we're really looking for weeds. We're thinking about herbicide carryover specifically from last year. Do you want to touch on some of the things we should be looking for? Well, I guess depending on where you farm across the prairies, Carrie, you might have some concerns with potential um, carryover or herbicide residual from 2020. Now, if you're in some of the wetter areas like central Alberta, northern Alberta, I would say you probably don't have anything to be concerned about. We had lots of moisture and it was fairly warm last summer, so it shouldn't be too bad. But if you're in maybe some of the drier areas of the prairies, um, especially southern Alberta or across Saskatchewan, you might want to take a look at some of the herbicides that you used last year and not necessarily assume they're gone. Now, there's a number of things that play into whether or not we have carryover. I mean, moisture by far is the one that we talk about the most, which is why I mentioned that first. But you also have to think about your soil texture. If you're in, like, for instance, the brown soil zones, a little bit more sandy, a little bit lower pH, you might have more of a concern with some of these products. Whereas if you're in the black soil zones, lots of moisture, high organic matter, you can probably get away with it. So, and again, gray wooded soils up in the northern part of the prairies, you might a little, be a little bit more concerned. So it's just important to, to take a look at the herbicides that you used last year um, and maybe just think about that before you, uh, before you put your crops in and just make sure that you're not going to have a lot of carryover. And I think it's important to note too that some of these herbicides are a couple years, I think, right? You yes. have to look at these fields not just last year but yes exactly and so the ones that I mean come to mind the most would be your group twos your group fours and maybe some of your group 27s those seem to be the ones that affect the pulses kind of repeatedly every year so depending on your soil really depending on your soil depending on your farm it's going to be important to just keep those things in mind because you're right some of these products can really tend to stick around and don't break down like maybe they you're hoping they do right so so you're walking through your field, you figure out you don't have any herbicide uh, residuals from last year. No, what's the next thing you're looking for as far as weeds? Are you, because especially with pulses, it's really important to keep those fields clean. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing that we say about pulse crops is they don't compete well. And we, we've been spreading that message for, for a long time and that they just don't have the ability to compete really well. It doesn't matter which pulse you're talking about. Um, lentils specifically can be, uh, you know, face a little bit more challenges, peas as well. Faba beans, even though faba beans are this tall, you know, leafy green strong plant people think oh yeah it'll out compete actually no they're very open um, canopy crop and so they don't actually compete necessarily as well as you can so there's certainly some things you can mitigate as far as you know not relying simply on your chemicals and stuff but right now is the time to be thinking about okay what are my weed issues that I had last year in this field what are the weed issues I had in this field a few years ago when I had pulses in there and what can you do right now now last year was a fairly open fall so I think a lot of farmers had the opportunity to go in maybe do some post harvest spray or chemical control on your fields and suspect you know, suspect that maybe we might be ahead of ourselves coming into 2021 than we were coming into 2020, for instance. But if not, there's definitely things you can do now. If you're looking at, you know, more of a minimum till or zero till situation, there's some great products out there. Some, you know, there's quite a range of pre-seed burn down products that you can put down if used safely. Um, with pulses, I would say that you need to be quite cons um, just vigilant on putting pre-seed herbicides down as pre -seed seed not pre-emergence because that has come and bit us in the butt a few times and I mean I completely understand farmers are busy just get it in the ground and then I'll deal with my burn down products afterwards before they come up and in a lot of cases you can get away with that but sometimes you can't and so you just got to be careful about that for sure but yeah making sure that you have clean fields to start with and if you do have even a slightly or like a minimum till situation you could put some of the more higher residual things like edge or treflon or something or in there to to really give you an advantage and with pulses we often hear about the critical weed free period when when especially is it important that those i mean 
they're never competitive crops, <laughs> but when, when is it especially important that that ground's clean? I would say that probably the window from when they are starting to emerge, um, coming out of the ground and you know starting to get a little bit of weight behind them, if you will, until you get into the, the really higher, or should I say, faster growing vegetative stages, okay? So as they're first coming out of the ground, especially when, this, when the ground could be a little bit cooler, okay? So they're not maybe not popping out of the ground and growing as fast as, as maybe they could. Now, if we have a nice warm spring and soils are really warm, it won't be quite as much of an issue. But there is a point when peas hit this vegetative stage where they really take off, as long as there's moisture available. And so I would say that's usually like the middle of June on. So the first four to six weeks, in my opinion, I think is when you really need to give um, your pulse crops an opportunity to really get established and get ahead for sure. Okay, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I don't think so. I think it's just important to remember that you need clean fields um, and keep an eye on your herbicides. The ones you're applying now, the ones you applied in the past, and uh, yeah, do your best you can to give these guys an advantage. Okay, thank you very much.